What's up YouTube? Just want to make a quick video. I was able to take old Bessie out here to the range. Actually out to the forest and uh, send some hate down range. It was good times. Um, but uh, I wanted to create a quick video. Yankee Marshall created a video just a little while ago called um, basically about avoiding contact um, when you're concealed carry. And this it kind of struck a chord with me because it's it's actually happened to me in the past where I've had to avoid while carrying, and basically just wanted to share my story with him. Um, but anyways, before I moved to Oregon, I lived in Arizona in the Phoenix area, and I had just gotten my concealed carry or CCW there, and basically I've I'd had it for about. I would say probably about six or seven months or so and was getting used to actually carrying the gun and it was actually this handgun it was this is an old Ruger um, P95 very I mean I've had this, this is my first handgun that I've ever bought this is like in the, the mid 90s um, but anyways I actually had this on me and the story goes something like this so I went to a convenience store and I pulled up into the parking lot and I kind of made a diagram. I pulled up in my truck and walked to the front of the store. And actually the doors were locked with a sign on the door that said they were just closed temporarily. They'd be back in, you know, half an hour. Anyways, I noticed a guy over here on the side next to a payphone. And when I got out of my car, walked to the door, pulled, pulled the door handles, read the sign, started to walk back, he yelled out and said, Hey, do you have any change? You know, and I said, No, I don't. I, you know... He's like, what are, you, what are you buying? He started asking some somewhat aggressive questions. And I said, you know, I'm just buying some soda or whatever, chips or something like that. And he said, well, give me some change. He kept saying over and over and over again. I said, dude, sorry. Can't do nothing for you, man. Anyways, he, I started walking back to my truck and he stood up and started following me. He actually came off the curb and followed me back to the door. And I was standing right here right by the door, um, getting ready to put my key in. And he came fairly close up by the front tire and he had something in his hand, but I couldn't see what it was because it was at nighttime. I really couldn't see if it was a knife, it wasn't shiny, but I don't know if it was some type of a club or what. But anyways, he'd come a little bit closer and I took a step back and at that point I'd actually thought, okay, well, this guy isn't that big, you know, he, he looks like he's tweaked out. Um, so I'd actually put my keys between my fingers. At least I can swipe at his face to get him, just to distract him to be able to back away. Um, because by that, I mean, he really entered my personal space, you know, within a couple feet. And I'd actually put one hand up to kind of stop him. And he started questioning me again, a little bit more aggressively. And he's looking in the window of my truck. And I'm like, dude, back off. And he's like, just give me some money, give me some money. Well, what else do you have? And I'm like, listen, asshole you know, back away now, or, you know, you're going to regret it. And he's like, why, what, you know, what are you going to do, this and that? And I just, I was getting ready just to knock him straight, just because, you know, this guy was just a piece of shit. Anyways, I kind of held back. He took a step back after I put my hand up. And from there, he was just kept staring at me. So I reached over, put the key in the car while I was watching him, you know, at any point getting ready to drop my keys and reach back if he was to come at me with whatever was in his hand. Um, I still didn't know what it was at that point because he had it down by his side on his uh, on his left side. And I had started to step diagonally back so I wasn't directly in front of him. Um, he, uh, he, he took a step back and I just sort of, you know, ready to drop my keys. Um, you know, grab my handgun from my waistband if I had to. Just to at least defuse the situation and get him away. Um, and scare him off, you know, if I actually had to brandish that firearm, you know, hopefully that alone would, would at least, you know, tell him to piss off. Um, but he'd actually step back and actually calmed him down as we were talking. He, he was, you know, in the beginning he was quite aggressive and calmed him down. He took, took a couple more steps back to the curb and just sort of stood there and looked, um, just staring at me. So I reached in, um, you know, I you know, coming back from the back wheels up, I reached in, put my keys in the in the uh, in the door, opened the door, still keeping an eye on him. But 
um, just in case he was, you know, rush the door or push the door on me to try and trap me or, or something along those lines. I can, I can still try to uh, um, either jump in the truck or dive out of the way of the door. Um, but man, it was actually, it was a very scary moment. Um, it was, you know, it was one of those moments where you just, uh, you're standing there and all of a sudden from that inner feeling, the adrenaline just, you know, just right up your body to your hands, to your fingertips, to your toes. It's just like, okay, any second now, you know, I'm not going to initiate this, but if this guy does, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going down. Anyways, I, he, he stepped back down off the curb as I started to get one leg in the door. He was standing in the front now, still asking for, for money or something. And by that time, I'd kind of tuned him out and just get in the car, get in the ignition, keys in the ignition as quick as I could to be able to drive off. I just, I, I, I popped the door, put my elbow up on the lock, um, or closed the door, put my elbow up on the lock to lock his old Chevy truck. It just started it up, gear, reverse, out of there. And, uh, you know, it was, it was probably one of my, one of the closer calls of somebody actually approaching during some type of a, of a aggressive situation. But anyways, I, I fully agree with Yankee Marshall. Um, I think, uh, you know, you really have to know, and I think know yourself more than anything, whether or not you can, uh, um, either handle the situation or be able to back away. You're not going to be a tough guy and, and sort of puff up. Um, you know, my first thought was to somehow defuse the situation either by punching, kicking, whatever it took before actually brandishing that firearm. Um, um, so anyways, you know, that's just my story. Um, you know, I'm sure others have similar situations where they've had some type of an altercation or, you know, something close to an altercation where if you felt threatened or you really had to, to um, draw your firearm. My, uh, my tipping point was when I couldn't see what was in his hand. I knew if he was going to swing something at me that I'd probably be uh, um, obviously threatened for my life and, and be justified in, in drawing down on him. But, uh, but anyways, I thought I'd share it. Um, again, the, the, old <laughs> the old P95, 9mm, you know, would have come in handy. Um, heavy ass gun. I gotta get rid of this thing. But anyways, um, um, hopefully make some more shooting videos. Um, get some of those coming out and uh, take old Bessie here out to the range again. And send some more hate downrange. And uh, talk to you later.